questions, a uh, few questions I'll be glad to take. I have a question. I don't want to interrupt whatever is going on. My name is Krishna Keshavadas. Should I go ahead? Yes. Yeah. Um, thank you, Professor Nasser, for your very nice presentation. It was a pleasure to listen. And um, as well as your comment about uh, Darwin, I very much appreciate that, very much so. Um, <clears throat> So my question though is, I'm coming uh, as a practitioner of what's called the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition or Bhakti Yoga, which emphasizes this more of a um, metaphysical dialectic foundation, not so much a pure monism or a pure dualism, but this dialectic, which recognizes the identity of identity and difference. Now, from what I heard of your discussion, it, it seems like the emphasis uh, of, of the perennial philosophy seems to be more monistic, where when you said, what is the real, uh, it, it, is, it can't be spoken about. It is beyond the words. It can't be spoken about. But then you went ahead and said that it's infinite, which means you can't place any limitations on it. So from what I've learned from my teachers, my perspective is that that is, uh, to me, saying that the, the truth, the, the fundamental absolute truth is something you, that cannot be spoken about, period, seems to be placing a limitation on it. Uh, and I think that limitation comes from not distinguishing between our speech and the fact that sound or, or the spoken is coming as an experience within the, the absolute context. So perhaps we cannot speak about the truth itself from our limited uh, effort, but uh, from a personalistic conception uh, coming from an idea that the reality is fundamentally personal, that the absolute is fundamentally personal, um, then, then that truth can speak about itself. And that is the idea behind revealed truth in the scriptures, I believe. So not so my, my humble uh, offering and I guess question uh, for you to comment on is perhaps it gives the wrong idea to say that the, the truth, absolute truth, fundamentally can't be spoken about, but more appropriately to say that we cannot try to grasp at it from our finite perspective through words, but the words can be revealed and that adequately can lead one to know about the truth. Yes, absolutely. I agree with that. Those, those two are not contradictory. Uh, whatever you say of the absolute truth, you limit by the language that you use, obviously, by the place you are, by who you are, and so forth. But it's an indication of a reality that is that indication itself is real, that leads to it. Let me turn to my own tradition. I'm a Muslim. God has revealed in Islam many names of himself. The supreme name is the name Allah. Everybody knows the word Allah. Now, what Allah is, is an infinity, infinite reality. I cannot know. But God has given me the ability to know that I cannot know him in his infinite reality. So there's something of me that is allowed to penetrate into the very highest reality, which is that of God in order to gain this knowledge that it cannot be discursively uh, explained. But that truth manifests itself by the word Allah itself, which I can utter. So I'm saying right in front of you, say Allah. That's, and the deepest sense, for example, in Sufism, we believe that ultimately only Allah pronounces his own name. When I say Allah, it's the God within the, my heart that says Allah, but we don't, I won't get into that. Just, that discussion, but I have similar in, uh, views in Hinduism. Uh, but uh, the two are not contradictory at all. Uh, first of all, if you have a personal view of the divinity, you also have, of course, the non-personal, the Advaita uh, point of view, the non-dualistic, I would not call it monism. 
Monism is a rationalistic philosophy, which is bound by that very uh, idea. Uh, so we call it non-duality. Uh, Advaita Vedanta is called non-dualistic Vedanta. I would call it not, not monistic Vedanta. Uh, because when you say God is one, it doesn't mean that uh, he is limited by his oneness. What I was saying in Arabic is that God is one without being limited by, 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 by his oneness. Is even beyond beyond that. Beyond there, there, the imagination stops, and our mental faculties cannot go any further. But his reality descends into our mental faculty, and even to our imaginal faculty, our emotional faculty, and all parts of our being can participate actually in reaching that reality. Uh, you know, uh, this uh, issue we discuss is very interesting. It's a consequence of discussing matters which never in history were discussed not only on internet, there was no internet until a few years ago, but in a conference. It was always these matters were discussed between a master and a student and a disciple and something transmitted. Some things were said unsaid. It was a, there was a knowledge of unsaying, the wisdom of unsaying, you might say. And uh, that's a very important issue. I did not get into that, but uh, the perennial philosophy does not negate what you said at all. Is there anybody else who has a question?